Well, hello, good people of the world. It's the Big Heavy, and I'm coming to you from the Basque region of France. And this video actually almost didn't happen due to some passport challenges that I faced trying to get myself over here. And I want to give you a little background on my passport issue since that might be relevant to you and also talk you through how I went and got my passport renewed in about 24 hours from when I started the actual application turn in process to when I had a passport in my hot little hands and give you an overview of how that works, some things I learned along the way and some tips and tricks if you find yourself in that situation. So to start out, we had planned this workcation. I'll put a link to my workcation series up there. I've been over here for about two weeks. We've got about a week and a half left. We've done some touristy stuff, had a great time, and I'm also trying to work over here. That's a bit of a separate topic and I've got a video series going on that. But obviously key to going and visiting another country is having the right travel documentation. And in most cases, unless you're staying within the United States, in my case, you need a passport. Now passports, I believe around the world are typically valid for 10 years, but that 10 years comes with a little bit of an asterisk and that's where I kind of wound up in a bit of a gray area. And that asterisk is in many countries, they require some amount of validity on your passport before it expires based on your travel dates. So in Europe, generally they require you to have 90 days of validity on your passport. So by validity, I mean before the expiration date that's printed on your passport from your departure date. Now, in my case, I kind of knew about these rules, but I had assumed it was based on your arrival date. And my passport had a little over 90 days, probably about 110, 115 from the date we arrived in France. So I assumed I was good to go. And then back around February, was doing a little more research into this and discovered that it's actually, in the case of France and several other European countries, 90 days from your planned departure date and I had already booked our tickets, had already planned hotels, itinerary, all that stuff, and I missed that window by about six days. Now, you could make a reasonable argument that would the border officials care, would they catch it? You know, what would happen if I showed up in France with a passport that was otherwise valid, you know, had well over 90 days of validity left from my arrival time, and as it turned out, when we arrived in France, they didn't even ask for my departure date, but that seemed like a pretty big risk. I don't know if they have some electronic means of, you know, looking at my flight itinerary. We had already booked our return flight and they, you know, might have flagged me or something based on the fact that I had less than 90 days of validity from our scheduled departure date. I don't know if they would have stopped me at the airport in the US and told me, you know, you need to fix this. You know, or if I had arrived in France, the immigration official had said, you know, your passport's not valid, too bad, so sad, you know, the turn up trucks over there or, you know, figure out how to get yourself back to the US and get that fixed. But in any of those cases, it didn't seem like a very good scenario. So I decided to try and renew my passport a bit early. And I found myself in this funny window that I think a lot of other people, at least in the US, are finding themselves in, in that I had about eight weeks before my trip. And at the time, the window for an expedited passport renewal was nine to 11 weeks. I think the regular passport window at that point was you know, 12 to 14 weeks. And all this is published somewhat helpfully on the State Department website where you can see the current renewal times. And that's where I got this information. The one thing that's not so helpful, and here's where we kind of transition into how to get your passport within a 24 hour window, is if you're less than that expedited renewal period, they don't give you a lot of options. They basically say on the website to call this special 1-800 number, which is invariably busy unless you call precisely when it opens at, I think it's 8 a.m. Eastern time at which point you'll go through a series of menu prompts and ultimately if you answer truthfully and say, you know, hey, I'm traveling in more than two weeks, you basically get told, you know, hey, go to the website and call back when you're within that two week window and, you know, thanks for nothing and the thing summarily hangs up on you. So you're in this weird block of time where it's too tight a window to go and apply for your renewal via mail, even with the expedited option and you're not within that two week period where they'll actually help you at one of the passport centers. And the passport centers are kind of this, you know, slightly magical, maybe less than, uh, than fully known resource in this passport process. And they're scattered randomly around the United States. They're in, you know, larger cities. They're in your New York's, LA's, Denver's, things like that, uh, Atlanta, which is the one I used. I think there's 12 or 14 of them. There's a map on the website. But basically the State Department has built this wall around them. You know, you can't just go and show up. You can't do drop-in appointments. The officer at the door of the Atlanta one where I went, 
you know, was very specific and rather firm in turning people away that were kind of milling around trying to get some sort of help. There's basically a placard outside saying, call the 1-800 number. So the wall around that is that 800 number for the State Department website. And this is where things start to get a little squirrely. So the first tip I'll give you, that number, you know, if you call any time after it immediately opens, you're probably not gonna get through. You know, they have the classic recording that your call is very important to us, but we have unusually high call volume, which rather than fixing, they apparently just, you know, say too bad, so sad. So the trick I used to finally get through was to call in, you know, at like 8 a.m. and six seconds. If you call in at 7.59 and 59 seconds, you end up getting a message that the thing's not open. I don't know if it's automated or if there's somebody that actually has to, you know, hit a little button that says we're now open. But if you call within that, you know, 8 to 802, 803 range, you'll eventually work your way through some phone menus and then you'll get a live person after 10 to 15 minutes. So tip number one, you know, call that thing early. Tip number two that's kind of strange is they say you can't call until two weeks before your travel date and you need travel documentation in order to do this expedited renewal process. What in reality happens is I called exactly two weeks by the calendar for my date of travel, finally got an operator and that person said, you know, no, it's actually tomorrow that you have to call in, so it's 13 calendar days, despite everything I saw you know, published everywhere saying two weeks. If you do manage to get yourself through to a human and you're not within that 13 day window, the people basically you know, won't do anything for you. It's all based on your date of travel and you are required to show some travel documentation like a printed flight itinerary or something like that. So once I did finally get through exactly 13 calendar days before my trip you know, with my printed travel itinerary, I did get someone who was able to check for appointments for me and they'll check the entire country and basically what this gentleman told me was the only available appointments were on my day of departure in Atlanta or in Hawaii. Now, Hawaii wasn't a particularly helpful location since I was flying out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Atlanta is about a three to five hour, depending on traffic, drive from my residence. And the phone operator said the place in Atlanta opens at 8 a.m. If you have all your documentation in order, he said it's generally a one hour process, you know, max of two hours, you'll go in at eight, You'll give them all your stuff and you'll walk out of there in a couple hours with the passport. So this was a little unnerving, being that we were going on an international trip. We were leaving that evening. I think our flight was at 7.40 p.m. But I figured if I could get there, you know, worst case, I'd get my passport at 10 a.m. ish. You know, I had even with traffic five or six hours, I could get home, get my family wrangled, do the kind of final checks before we got out and get us to the airport and, and live happily ever after. So with that in mind, I'll give you tip number two, and that's, you know, make the logistics as easy on yourself as possible. In my case, I booked a hotel that was, you know, literally more or less across the street from the passport agency. There's in the Atlanta one, a Hotel Indigo, there's a Hyatt, there's three or four hotels right within the vicinity of that passport agency. Since I did have that, you know, six plus hour round trip drive, I didn't want to do that all and then go sit on a plane for six hours. So I was able to, drive down the night before, you know, get myself set up in the hotel. Also on the topic of logistics, one thing that, you know, frankly kind of saved my butt was I packed up, you know, 98% of my stuff for our trip. I had my big suitcase packed, I had my briefcase mostly packed. You know, I had a couple or three things kind of scattered around my desk, but they were all in the right vicinity. You know, I kind of laid everything out and was, you know, more or less set under the assumption that if three or four bad things happened, I might have you know 20 minutes or so to kind of throw everything in a suitcase and grab our car to the airport. Now you might be saying, hey, that's kind of ridiculous. You know, I have to you know, go and pay for a hotel in order to get my passport renewed and that's not right and you know, there shouldn't be all these delays and that sort of thing. And I wholeheartedly agree with you, but you're going to see throughout these other tips that kind of the theme of this is being flexible and having the means to, to kind of plan and have some contingencies and being able to throw some money at this problem is ultimately probably, unfortunately, the best way to work around something like this. So I had my passport appointment, had my hotel booked, Basically, all you need is the typical blue form to renew your passport. I think it's a DS-11. You need your old passport. You need passport photos. Apparently, you can take them yourself these days. But I went to a local CVS that you know, promised to create government-regulated passport photos. 
So I had that, and that was basically all I needed. You know, if you are getting a passport for the first time, the requirements are a little different. You need birth certificates and all that stuff, but pretty straightforward. So passport application, old passport, passport photos, and then a printed copy of my flight itinerary were the four things that I need to bring with me. And the other pro tip I'll give you is they do give you a appointment confirmation. It's both a number and this, you know, sort of weird amalgamation of your last name and birthplace. I printed that out and stuck that in my file folder. Now with all this ready to go, went down to my hotel, was ready to go and have a nice restful night's sleep with a plan to get up super early and trying to start to adjust to European time. And I made either the you know great move or a big mistake, depending on how you look at it. And in hindsight, I'm not sure which it was, of going and looking at some Yelp reviews of the passport agency. And I started to freak out a little bit when I started seeing people saying, you know, hey, got my passport the same day, it was super awesome. You go in in the morning and then you come back at noon to pick up your completed passport. And I was like, hey, noon is not the one or two hours I was promised. So, you know, my planning was going from leaving Atlanta at 10 a.m. at the latest to now potentially I'm leaving at noon. Then I read some other more recent reviews and they were saying, hey, come and pick up your passport at 2.30 p.m. And now, you know, my window kept shrinking down from like having this five or six hour window of contingency to now having, you know, hour, 30 minutes, that sort of thing. So I'm freaking out a little bit and, you know, I did see something that reassured me a little, which was one of the Yelp responses that seemed to have come from some sort of State Department person that said, you know, hey, we'll work with you, you know, make sure you tell your agent and we're, you know, we're kind of willing and open to being flexible and, and helping you out depending on your situation. So with all that in mind, you know, having a little bit of a minor freak out and not having a great sleep, got up super early, put my butt in the passport line around seven-ish, maybe quarter of seven. So it was a good hour and a half before the thing opened. There was one other group in line in front of me. And by the time the thing opened up at eight, and they did open, you know, I think reasonably promptly, maybe around 7.55-ish, there was a line going around the corner and there must have been a good 100 or 200 people in this line. The people in front of me who were there, you know, well before me kind of went up to the first desk and they didn't have their, appoint their appointment confirmation number. So that goes back to that pro tip of having that little printout. I gave that to the guy, you know, he sort of keyed me in, made sure I was who I said I was. This is all relevant to Atlanta, so it may, may or may not apply to the passport agency that you go to. But after the initial check, you go to a window, those people kind of look at your documents, make sure you have your stuff together. You then get sent up to an elevator, you go through a metal detector, the guy at the front door made a big deal about not having any knives or weapons or anything like that, so you know, leave your, uh, your Glocks and your switchblade at home. And went through that metal detector, went to another lady and you know, showed her all my documents and said, you know, hey, when am I gonna be able to get this? And she said, you know, pick up is at three, no exceptions. So now my kind of minor panic attack from the night before is turning into you know, a bit of a more major panic attack. And you know, I was like, hey, can you help me? You know, I've got a flight at 7.40 out of Charlotte. It's you know, bare minimum, three and a half hour drive. That's gonna get me there at 6.30. My flight's at 7.40. And you know, she basically said, too bad, so sad. And you know, her advice was, hey, call the airline and book a different flight, which once I looked later on and found it was $3,500, that was obviously not an option. So at this point, I've spoken with three human beings and been redirected from window to window, which is apparently the standard process. All of them have told me, you know, too bad, so sad, pickup time is at 3 p.m. And I finally get to the lady that accepts all my paperwork and everything was seemingly in good order. I did have to write something about my mailing address being the same in black ink, which for some reason is a thing with the State Department. God forbid if you fill out your forms in blue ink and I heard a few people that had to redo their forms based on that. And she basically said the same thing, you know, pickup is at three. You know, I said, hey, it said on you know the website that you guys are helpful to some extent. She said, nope, I have people, you know, I think her line was I have people coming in here and crying all day, every day, and you know, call your airline and see if you can rebook. This whole process literally took all of, you know, six minutes maybe. I talked to some people that went in line a little later and they were up there for, you know, an hour to 90 minutes. So, you know, once again, kind of behooves you to get there early and you know be as early in the line as possible. And so now it's like eight, I think it was like 8.07 when I looked at my watch and I'm in full freak out mode. So if I got everything, you know, exactly at three and, you know, didn't have much wiggle room and there was zero traffic between Atlanta and the Charlotte airport, I would get there at approximately 6.30. I'd have to park my vehicle, you know, get through security, all that stuff. And my flight leaves in an hour. 
So I'm trying to think through the different scenarios. You know, at this point I had ruled out going home. By the time I, you know, went home, I would, you know, barely make it by seven and the fight leaving at 740. That wasn't gonna work. I looked at, there's a valet parking option at Charlotte Airport where you basically park your car at the terminal and then they you know, take it away for you. It was exceedingly expensive to do that for multiple weeks. But I did go ahead and book that option since I was able to reserve it in advance and I was able to cancel you know, up to my estimated arrival time at parking. So you know, I had backup plan number one. I started thinking about backup plan number two and actually my wife you know, sort of said, hey, why don't you look at flying out of Atlanta? And I think she meant, you know, look at flying out of Atlanta to France, which I did. It was exceedingly expensive to book that same day. It was also pretty expensive to book it the next day or a day or two out from there. I didn't have any of my stuff and I was worried about having my family you know, have an extra two pretty heavy suitcases that they'd have to wrangle around and all that. So I started looking at, you know, could I get from Atlanta to Charlotte? And there ended up being a Delta flight. I think it was about 400 bucks. And, you know, again, yes, does that suck that I had to pay an extra 400 bucks I wasn't planning on? 100% absolutely. You know, 400 bucks is, is not chump change for me or, you know, probably any of you. But that kind of goes back to that, you know, having the ability to throw some money at the problem ultimately helped solve it. So that's what I ended up doing. I went ahead and booked a flight from Atlanta to Charlotte. It's a pretty short flight. You know, I think we were in the air for all of 25 minutes. I booked parking at the Atlanta airport. There was nothing on site, so I had to book an offsite place. And this kind of goes to my next tip for you. And that's, you know, obviously be flexible. Obviously, if it's possible for you to have the, you know, the resources to be able to do things like book a last minute flight, absolutely do it. And, you know, more pointedly, go and check and reserve things as much as possible. You know, I was moving at the absolute last minute. If I had just driven into the Atlanta airport hoping to find parking, I would have been sorely disappointed. I probably would have spent 10 or 15 minutes, you know, swinging around to all these different lots since Atlanta airports kind of geographically scattered all over the place. But based on the fact that I went to the airport's website beforehand and looked up and saw the long, long term parking was full, I was able to book something off site. I was able to go directly there. I was able to kind of put all these destinations in my phone and have everything ready. Since I did have that time period from about 8, 10 in the morning to 3 p.m. when I was slated to be able to pick up my passport. The other note I will add is the passport fees for this service are actually the same as if you sent the passport in and requested expedited processing. So the government doesn't really you know, milk you or charge you anything extra for this service other than all these logistical hoops that you do have to jump through. So all that done, I figured I needed to maximize my chances of success. So I went and got back in the line for passport pickup, I think at like 1250-ish. So it was a good two hours before the, the place opened. You know, the line again grew, I think to the end it was, was well around the block. And there were a bunch of just, you know, for lack of a better phrase, jerks that kind of ambled up, pretended they didn't see the line, you know, weaseled their way into an early section of line. There were a surprising number of people that said they had same day travel that day or were traveling the next day. So apparently it's not uncommon to call these places, you know, the, the absolute earliest you can, those 13 days out, and then have them tell you the best appointment they can do for you is the day of your travel. And you know, probably one of the most frustrating characters in the line was this young dude who you know, ambled in at like 2.55, said, hey, I've got a flight you know, tonight at 10 p.m. or something, can I cut the whole line? And everyone sort of said, no, you know, everyone here has been waiting for two hours. And then finally the, you know, the cop came out that, uh, that protects the whole place at like 3.05. And you know, people were arguing with this character, you know, myself included, kind of saying, hey, you sort of didn't do the right thing, go to the end of the line. And the cop said, look, I'm not gonna get involved in any of your debates. You know, if you guys can't figure it out, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna not open the doors. And this guy basically turned to me and said, I'm gonna start a scene if I can't, you know, cut in front of you. So I waited for two and a half hours, this jabroni, you know, cut in front of me, but whatever. So the guy finally opened the place up at, you know, I would say 305, 308, you know, my heart's pounding because I'm, you know, literally counting the minutes to actually be able to make my flight. This time there was no kind of pre-check at the door. It was just, you know, roll up to that second window on the ground floor of the building. I had a little receipt, so obviously make sure you get that. That kind of has your confirmation number. They had a big old tray of passports. You know, lady filed through them, found my thing, said to check it. You know, I opened it up, saw my, you know, mean mug smiling back at me for my passport. They give you back your old passport. You know, everything seemed to be in order. I did a very quick cursory check of all that. And at this point, literally ran out of the Atlanta passport office. I had my car staged at the hotel I had been staying at and you know, basically had all my bags in there, was ready to roll. 
since I did have a pretty light bag, I you know, just packed an overnight backpack. I transferred out all the stuff I didn't need, kind of hid it in my truck, ended up for my carry-on bag using a hotel laundry bag for my laptop and you know, my dirty drawers and some other minimalistic stuff. So that was kind of ghetto, but you know, in summary, my car was 100% ready to go. Ran out of that place, jumped in the truck, you know, hauled ass to the parking lot I had booked, barely made it uh, due to some uh, traffic incidents. And then, you know, I had to take a shuttle van over to the airport. The shuttle bus was of course painfully slow. You know, my life expectancy is decreasing exponentially as all these things happen. I get off, you know, run through there. Luckily again, I have clear and I have pre-check. So I was able to avoid the rather extensive line for security. You know, waited for the world's slowest TSA person to kind of process everything through the thing. Got my stuff. If you've ever been to the Atlanta airport, you know you have to ride a tram. Rode the tram, sprinted to the gate, was feeling surprisingly good and athletic based on my uh, weight loss program, which I'll you know, put a link up there at some point, and plop my butt on the plane. And you know that was a pretty big relief knowing that I paid the flight. And I made it probably with 15 minutes to spare before they closed the doors and, and shoved off. So that was a pretty narrow window. And if I had missed that flight, you know, there wasn't really another one that would get me to Charlotte in time. So my plan was if I missed that, you know, drive back to Charlotte, see what I could do on the phone with the, with the airline I was flying and tell some sob stories and see if I could get out the next day. But ultimately, you know, the plane pushed off once we got in the air, you know, I, I breathed a, a much larger sigh of relief since that flight landed about two hours before my flight to Paris was scheduled. So got to Charlotte airport, was able to meet my family at the airport, help them with some of the luggage wrangling and you know, get to, uh, to the lounge. We were able to knock down a glass of champagne and basically you know, breathe a sigh of relief and here I am. So if you find yourself in that similar situation where you've got some sort of passport problem, you know, you're inside that window of where you can process your renewal via mail, there is that option. Just be aware that you know, these appointments are, are pretty tough to come by from speaking to some of the people in the line. You know, the people on the phone were saying, hey, your options are like you know, Denver, Hawaii. You know, they're, they're not close to home. They're not in any of the major cities. They're gonna send you somewhere weird. And there's a pretty high probability you're going to get your appointment you know, potentially the day of your trip. You know, some people, pretty much everyone I talked to, it was in the, within a two or three day window. You know, There's nobody that kind of said, you know, hey, I've got a week or so before I have to go. So, you know, good news, realize there's an option there. It doesn't cost you any more than doing an expedited renewal by mail. Bad news, you're probably going to have to do some logistical wrangling. You're probably going to have a pretty stressful experience. And you know, if you're someone in you know, my case is kind of the, the just about worst case scenario beyond having to miss my flight, you, know, you may have to go and do some last minute things like book last minute planes, you know, leave your car in the wrong city. I now have to go when I get home and go and retrieve my truck and drive it back to, uh, to my home. But you know, ultimately I think it was, uh, was worth it. It was probably, seven, eight hundred bucks of nonsense to make all this happen. But I'm here, I'm with my family, you know, we're in, uh, in another country and having a great time. And you know, do be aware that option is available to you. And if you need to use it, best of luck. Hopefully your experience is a little bit less stressful than mine. And this is a big heavy wishing you safe travels and lots of bon and all your voyages. Peace. Ever wonder why every talking head on YouTube asks you to hit the like and subscribe button at the end of their video? You are right, because we're living in a computer simulation. And our benevolent robotic overlords get just a little bit of energy every time you hit that like. So do me, the rest of civilization, and our benevolent robotic overlords a favor. Match that subscribe, be kind to each other, keep living your simulated dream.